good, good. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. I love the film. I just can't. <laughs> I saw it last night and I just, I just, I don't know what I was expecting. I think I kind of read the premise and I thought, so, oh, you know, it sounds like a film I've seen before, but I've, I've, no, I've never seen anything like this before. It was just so good. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, my first uh, question, I haven't got too long, um, is uh, it's just sort of what it was. I mean, obviously there's so many reasons, but what it was that really attracted you to getting involved in this project, what was the, the main draw for you? The, I mean, the main draw was, I think, that the... The script, I could not put the script down after reading it, which was just like a sign to me. It was like, oh, this is worth working on. And something that has such a musicality in the language and the specificity, everybody talks a little bit differently, yet they all still feel like they're from a different era. It's like a really special script. And then talking with Andrew was like someone who his vision was so, and he was so interested in getting like, um, like the, like, like a, Sort of the right kind of good performance not just like a good performance but like something that really held tension and and sort of was able to build throughout uh and i just really i just really sort of trusted him and trusted that idea and i i could, couldn't wait to do it yeah yeah i mean you mentioned the the dialogue it did, it did almost feel at times a bit almost like a stage play because it was i mean some of the scenes are, are so lengthy um did it but when you were sort of performing it, did it almost feel quite rhythmic, almost like choreographed, like more so than the kind of, I mean, I guess there's so many different types of acting, but in this instance, it almost felt like it was a dance between the two characters. I, I, that's, I, I'm so glad you thought that because I couldn't agree more. It, it totally felt like that. And, you know, funnily enough, there was like no, I, I think there's one line in the whole movie that's improv. It's, it's basically all that musicality and that feeling of spontaneity is all in the, in the words and we just yeah we got you know we got to rehearse for a week before we started which was amazing and you don't always get to do that and i think that that excuse me that totally um that totally changed the game and allowed me and sierra to you know develop that chemistry that makes it that makes it watchable and, and sort of easy and fun and dance like I'm just wondering about your, your first experience seeing the movie as well, because, I mean, it feels like one of those films where it's got a real mood and atmosphere to it, which I'm assuming you can kind of, you can get a sense for on set to some degree, but it's, I get a lot of it is sort of delivered in post and stuff. And I was just wondering if, when you first saw it, if you yourself were taken aback by what, what was put together. I was totally taken aback. I mean, the first time that I saw the finished product was at Slamdance with, uh, with an audience at the festival on, on the big screen. And I was like, you know, me and Sierra had seen little bits of the of what Andrew was working on, but he really kept the you know he, he kept it till the end, and yeah, it was incredible. I was total my my jaw was on the floor, but it was also what was amazing is that you felt it, you felt the other people in the room be affected by it, which was you know like that's you just hope as, as an actor, I guess as an artist of any kind that like what you what you throw out there is gonna it's gonna land on people and it, and it did. And it sort of, you felt the room go on the journey with, with uh, Everett and Faye. And it, yeah, it was so, so gratifying and so, and so terrific. I was just, I was astonished actually. What it and it, was, it wasn't just the chemistry uh, between yourself uh, and Sierra, which was really good, but also you had to create a kind of chemistry via the phone lines, via between yourself and kind of, I just wondering if you had an actor or actors, sorry, on the other end of, of the line when you were talking, so, so, so you had something to bounce off. I had a very good actor. He was our first AD and his name is Jeff. <laughs> and he read the lines terrifically uh, and I couldn't have asked for better. But then, yeah, we got, uh, we, then we got Bruce in and post and his voice is just amazing. And I mean, the film also, in some ways, it feels like, uh, for me, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe it's just because I'm a big fan of the radio, and, uh, but it felt like a bit of a love letter as well to, to the radio. Is it, I'm just wondering, I mean, you know, in, in a kind of modern world, it, it's, some, it's, it's managed to survive so much, hasn't it? I mean, so much has come and gone and we seem to, technology seems to be progressing more and more, but the radio's always just maintained this kind of staple. I'm just wondering about what you make of, of the radio and if you listen frequently and how, how vital it is we protect that as a kind of art form. That's, that's such a great point. Yeah, and, I, and radio's even evolving now. I think about podcasts. My, you know, some, some of my favorite things recently have been podcasts. And you're right, it is, it's so enduring. And I think that what makes it enduring and what drew Andrew to the idea to make a movie that was in some ways a love letter to, to radio is that it's just like, it's so basic. It's so basic in terms of the storytelling. It's like, it's like, it's just sort of, I mean, it's primal storytelling. Close your eyes and all you have is is a voice 
and you know the the hair that starts to stand up on your arms or your neck when tension rises and I, I think that he was interested in like stripping away as much as you could and seeing what what's still there uh and i think that that idea and radio sort of just go hand in hand because it's so enduring and so sort of just the bare the bare necessities and another thing we sort of i think as audience members we romanticize over is this kind of 50s america which is it's got it's sort of so steeped in cinema cinema now it, it kind of feels like it's not even a real part of history it almost feels like it's something that just was created by hollywood i was just wondering about being on set in that era and kind of seeing people in the kind of outfits and having the equipment around you and if it if it kind of tapped into that almost quite inherent notion of kind of make-believe which i guess is what is makes acting such a desirable craft right from when we're all sort of kids yeah i i i, I couldn't agree more that's what it was like i mean See, it, there is this like inherent American nostalgia for for um, for the fifties, and you know I guess it's the beginning of stardom too. Like Elvis really becomes the first like you know mega mega star, and we and we really do have this nostalgia for for this time. And I, I would just say that it actually makes it yeah incredibly fun and incredibly easy to act actually in it because you're just you put the clothes on and do your hair and the glasses, and it's like. Oh, I'm a different person. I'm I'm in a different time, and it's 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 like in many ways easier and more fun to act than something where I'm wearing a plan. You know, it, it sort of transports you immediately. And yeah, there's just something magical about those old cars. And you know, they don't really work right anymore. I'm trying to drive them, and they keep you know the clutch keeps. But there's you know they're still just beautiful. Is there is there a specific time in history that you if you had the chance to go back in time you'd most like to to go and see? So I'll put you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean, I yes, may, maybe I would go to the fifties. I, I I might also go 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 to early nineties, or I might go I might go way way back. <laughs> if fifties America still had a lot of problems, it might <laughs> I might go way back. Um, and I mean, you obviously mentioned uh, Sierra. You guys strike up an incredible uh, sort of chemistry in this, and I'm just wondering about that's it about sort of when you first met her and if, if, if it was quite a sort of a very natural thing that came to you both very quickly and how pleased you were that you had a kind of co-star where there was a very tangible sort of connection yeah it was it was immediate we just sort of rehearsed for a week we hung out uh and we just became became best of friends it was great it's just very incredibly easy to hang out with her which is part of what i think makes her such a good actor is that i mean people i think a lot of actors just have natural sort of trust and chemistry and it becomes easy to to get on board with them um uh, yeah, and there's also just this natural bond that happens when you're when you're doing all night shoots because everybody's staying up all night together, and it's like it becomes this sort of like campfire, like sleepover feeling because you're just up, you know, when you go to sleep when the sun comes up. And anyway, yeah, it was it was great. And I mean, obviously, a word on on Andrew as well because from just he, you can just like see such a voice in his work already. I'm just wondering what he was like to to collaborate with on this project. What sort of what sort of filmmaker is he? Um, he's the kind of filmmaker who sees the entire movie. He's got the whole movie in his head on you know on day one, and so and and so this person is very easy to trust because of that. And I, I would say that it was like you know because of how detailed and how sort of very committed to his vision he was it's very easy to trust him when he's like we got it. or like you know you know if, if we're not moving you know if we got it you know we have to do it 10 more times you do it 10 more times it's like we, he really sort of is is versatile and in that way you can kind of shoot either really quickly if you get it you keep moving or you can keep going um, and I was wondering too about the um, the film being sort of because obviously it's being released on kind of video on demand and stuff. And I saw it just at home in my living room. And I was just wondering because obviously I absolutely I, I think it worked perfectly on the kind of smaller screen. I would love to see it in, in a cinema. But I'm just wondering about your sort of thoughts on that. And this way, when you do have films that are shown uh, kind of on video on demand, is that something you're quite a big advocate of? Because I guess in some ways it, it it reaches more people. It's quite it's a very accessible way for people to to see things. Yeah, it's super accessible. You're right. There's there's definitely some 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 wins in it that you just there, you get to reach an audience that you really just there's no other way. And it's one of the biggest advantages of making you know you know of working on. On, on film projects now is how many people you can reach. I, I guess there's different, I mean, when you're watching alone in your, a thriller alone in your room, there's a certain tension to that, that you can't kind of get if you're in a big room with a lot of people. 
that and that being said, you know, it playing in drive-ins on a, on a huge screen in the middle of nowhere, you know, in the dead of night, that also feels like you 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 gain some sort of creepiness from. So yeah, I, I I'm a total fan though of of streaming, and and the audience that it that it allows people to to get to. It's a great point. What's next? Have you got any projects that you've got looking coming up that you're excited about? Uh, I've got the um, uh, Cinestate and Fangoria are doing a Castle Freak reboot that you know was supposed to go to festivals and who knows what'll happen. Uh, and then another film called Agnes that's uh, uh, Divide and Conquer and um, a Quagmire uh, production company. So, really so whenever that happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully if they do happen and you promote them in London, you might be able to speak in person by that point. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I, I would love that. I would love yeah. that. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!